Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And welcome, and thank you all for coming. Uh, it's great to have people to look at when I'm talking, and it's great to have you here interested in what I'm hopefully going to tell you. Um, and hello, everybody who's, not, who's on the internet version of this. Um, so I'm here, uh, my name is Victor. Uh, I live about 45 minutes outside of Malmö. I live in a little village called Röstanga. Um, and uh, I'll just, I, my background is uh, economics and IT, but I've spent the last 10 years um, around food and uh, growing food. I have a little mushroom farm and I try to create uh, food system technologies to help uh, farmers become a bit more um, sustainable, maybe. Um, and but the last couple of years, uh, there I, I uh, found this um, framework that I have become quite engaged in the ecosystem of, uh, and uh, that has really uh, brought me back into IT uh, and into using technology to support the kind of um, regeneration of ecosystems. That is my kind of main goal. But I think that this is a very potent tool, uh, not just for that, but for any sort of uh, group coordination, uh, facilitation uh, needs. Um, and I thought I wouldn't do too much of a presentation kind of style thing. I was going to do the very bare bone basics uh, and then have more of a uh, question and answer kind of thing. This is a little bit uncomfortable. That's okay. Um, so uh, that's my that's my idea. And I'm happy to take uh, questions. Uh, I, my Julia, a friend of mine, will hopefully be able to uh, note them down if, uh, because I have this. One of the applications I have running here is actually a Holochain application that is meant as a project management tool, but I will use it today as a place to collect questions. Uh, and so she can edit them from her computer as well, which is. Uh, it's more fun to show a peer-to-peer -peer application with more than one peer. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, but I'll just start, maybe before I start, just for people in the room, uh, can I have a, a, a show of how much do you know about Holochain? As in, this is, I've never heard it before tonight. Uh, and this is, I've been a part of this, uh, learning about this for five years, and I know most of it. And so anywhere in between, where are we at? OK, OK, great. Mostly just beginners in the room. Great. Then we can start from, from, from scratch, basically. Uh, so Holochain is a um, framework for developing distributed applications, so serverless applications. There are no servers needed. Uh, you are running the applications on your uh, hard on your own uh, desktop or laptop or wherever you run it. Uh, and then, so all of your calls, for technical people, all of your calls go to the local host and then the framework uh, uh, communicates uh, with the peers. Uh, it is basically, um, this is an image that I thought might be useful uh, as a way to distinguish. Um, the name Holochain might uh, let people think that this is a blockchain. This is not a blockchain. Uh, a blockchain is where all of the uh, nodes in the middle all have all of the data. Uh, this is a something that doesn't cover a lot of use cases that we want to use it for. Uh, this is a lot more flexible, where you uh, host your data, and then there is a distributed hash table. Uh, so basically, the same technology that Torrent is built around, uh, but a bit of an upgraded version of that. Um, that basically lets you hold some of your other, uh, some of the other peers' data, so that that can be available even though that person isn't online. Uh, so there's a redundancy of the data that way. Um, maybe I'll just take a quick question here already. See if there's something that has come up. Otherwise, I'll continue. Sure. So is this uh, is this some kind of mesh? Technology, then, uh, would you say? It can be. It can be used by uh, like by mesh. Uh, 
In general, I'd say yes. I mean, you can use it. For instance, if you're using a mesh network where you're connecting your routers, that's a very good use case for using this uh, because you wouldn't have to actually connect to the outside internet in order to have the applications talk to each other. Uh, however, it's fully functional to just, I mean, most of the applications now and everything will be uh, running on the regular uh, internet infrastructure. Uh, but it's not dependent on uh, the internet. You could use it just by connecting through Bluetooth uh, to another peer uh, and gossiping that way uh, information. Uh, so that's a possibility. So, oh yeah. So Sorry. quite flexible in terms of, but, but architecturally it is like a mesh. Isn't it? Uh, because uh, it's not, as you're saying, it's a client server and, uh, and it's sort of it's, it's peer to peer, yes. basically, yes. like a mesh network. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jacob. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going into the details too much, but like uh, when you don't have an internet connection, will the DHT still work? I don't know if a DHT that does really work. Yeah. Um, Maybe can we can we note it down and I can come back to it. Uh, it's in in general, or maybe I can maybe I can just say quickly that it's uh, it will try t you will if your if your entry say it's a blog post that you've created, and as long as when you're online when you're creating it it'll try to to gossip it to peers, uh, and then if you go offline and somebody has it. Uh, they will see that this, there's not enough people that are holding this piece of information. They will gossip it to other people. So it would stay online as long as somebody is online. Um, but if, every, if all of the peers go down, it will be hard to find. You won't be able to find anything if you're, if you're coming into the network and everybody else is gone. Um, but maybe that's, um, I don't know, d does it answer your question? Or? Yeah, I was more thinking of the people who are offline, if they could keep using that. Yeah. Everything they already have, at least. But uh, maybe this, maybe I'll, I'll keep going, uh, and we'll. Uh, sorry. Okay, but maybe okay, maybe maybe I'll go for a little bit. If the question online, uh, okay, can we can we note it down and and we can see? Yes. So the is uh huh. Yes, the software. Yes, if that's what we're using. Yes, that's what we're using here. And if somebody wants to ask questions online, there is actually a you can you can download the latest version of Acorn and you can use this uh, passphrase, which is, oh, I guess you'll have to do a print screen on your screen right now if you're viewing on YouTube, and you can put that in, uh, and then you can um, uh, go into the project that I'm actually using, which is the Food Cafe Questions one, uh, and there you'll be able to add questions directly to this thing as a peer. So that would be fun if somebody online wanted to do that. So the and the acorn.software is the website where you where you'll find uh, acorn. Okay. Um, so basically there are two parts and I like this image which is an old much older image uh, that's not currently on the website, but I feel like it kind of displays this idea of there is a DHT uh, which is all of the peers and all of the information that they've shared within in the shared space. And then there is the, uh, the source chain for each user. Uh, and the source chain is basically uh, a, all of your entries that you put in, whether that's photos or blog posts or uh, economic transactions or whatever, whatever the application is handling, they uh, are added uh, to in a, in a chain where every entry has uh, a reference back to the last entry. And every entry is hashed so that you can't change anything without changing that hash. Uh, so you're basically, you're, you're keeping the, or you're, you're using the cryptography um, side of things, which is also what blockchains use, for instance, to make sure that there is integrity backwards in time. You can't change anything that you've done. You can't cheat, cheat the system in that way. Um, but 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 you're sharing only uh, what you want to share, and if there is also a possibility for people to uh, uh, request uh, information from you that isn't publicly shared, so there's a possibility to create applications that where where there are some some parts of uh, the application that is shared information, and some parts where you I say I would like to see this thing that you've produced that you've told me about, uh, but that's not fully visible for everybody. Um, 
And so around this source chain, uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm not going to go too deep into the technicals. Actually, I mean, how? Uh, okay, another question. Uh, in this room, how how much are you developers, technical people, and how much are you more businessy or use user? people. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I don't program at all, and I'm not a technical person. This is, I spend most of my time on computers doing programming most of the day. Okay, um, so it's a bit of a mix. Okay, so then I think uh, I, will, I will actually keep it uh, maybe even this brief, and I'll just do some more questions, and then uh, for more in-depth uh, technical questions, we can do that as they uh, arise a bit later when I show uh, a little bit of the software. Um, okay, so are, are there any other questions right now? Yes. Uh, so I the question is, is this open source? This, is, this framework is completely open source. Uh, Holochain is um, a foundation that is um, uh, letting this piece of software live pr uh, completely open source. There is um, a lot of the work that's being done. Uh, the, the applications that I'll show today, Acorn is open source. Um, there are people developing uh, proprietary uh, applications on top of Holochain, but most of the work that I know of is, is open source also. Um, and this works really well with the... So basically, the, the applications, uh, Holochain doesn't really need to know about people who uh, who use it as a framework and create applications. And actually, if we created a little chat, uh, chat applications with the uh, eight of us in this room, uh, and we all installed it and started talking together and playing together, nobody else outside of this room would know that we have this application running or would need to would need to be a part of that. So that's uh, it. Everything is, is contained. Every application creates its own network, uh, basically. In, in terms of use cases, uh, w w I, I can I can imagine social applications. Uh, is, is that a prime use for it, or is are there other prime areas of uh, use cases for Holochain? Um, yes, social applications in general. Coordination, group coordination, is uh, at the core of uh, what this is being built for. Uh, I mean, uh, for what the people that have, are building it uh, want to use it for. Um, it comes out of a larger project called the Metacurrency Project. Uh, so that project also is um, aiming to find ways for us to make visible things that we currently aren't seeing uh, in the world, uh, both within our groups, uh, but also in the larger ecosystems and, and, and biological systems and, and uh, things like that. Um, so that's uh, uh, one of the main uh, drivers for developing this whole framework was to be able to create those sort of um, uh, visibility uh, possibilities for for uh, for different flows. Uh, so this can be economic flows. This can be flows of water or or carbon or uh, it can be any sort of um, uh, flow that you want to visualize in order to be able to shape that flow, uh, basically. So this is this is the the the, the impetus be behind the project. Uh, and I can show maybe I'll maybe I'll use that as a segue to uh, actually show jump into a bit of a, the demo or maybe maybe I'll see you. are there any other questions before I do uh, am I right in thinking that the one of the the key thing differences between blockchain was the last slide that you showed with the the uh, data integrity so so one has the control and integrity over over your own data, which is uh, maybe, yeah, not not uh, totally what happens with blockchain. Definitely, I mean that uh, in in blockchain land, everything is basically public. Uh, that's the idea of the of the transparency behind it. Uh, whereas this is this is much more of like I the 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 information is always just stored locally with me, and I choose what pieces of information to share. But when I do share, I share into the, into the space that we are bo all sharing I within the application. Uh, so you're not sharing into, into everywhere. You're sharing into that 
space that you've joined. And there is a, there is a possibility for every application you can have a joining proof uh, to say that this is, I am um, uh, allowed into this application. You can send people a uh, 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 sort of invite for people to come in. That's what we were doing with this, with the ACORN. This is basically a very simple joining proof, uh, just to s or the same mechanism is you just need to know the words to get into this, uh, and then you're in that uh, network. Uh, and everything that you put in here is visible to everybody, and the kind of actions that you take there. Uh, but they're not visible outside, so that's definitely like that. That being able to control uh, where your information is shared to uh, is a very big part and a driver uh, for this. Okay. Can I just add that yeah. the the one sentence that I learned the first time when I was learning about Holochain that really stuck with me was that uh, blockchain is a data centric uh, sort of framework and uh, Holochain is a user centric framework. Yeah. That's kind of it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, right. And 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 also agent is is uh like being be like and I'll I'll actually show that uh, in a little bit. I'll come back to that. Um but I just wanted to show so there's a you can if you want to play with things, there's a there's a launcher which so currently this is there is not a lot of just really simple things for end users to 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 play with if you don't have any technical uh, like if you're not into technic using, um, you know, the technology in a bit more uh, complex way. So basically now there is a launcher that you can install, uh, which is basically like a runtime, uh, and you just you can Google Holochain launcher and you can come to the to the uh, repo uh, and you can download it and install it. And what you get is this, uh, which is basically. Uh, just an application, uh, a, a frame around uh, what's basically a web uh, browser, but uh, contained. Uh, so this is Towery is the, the framework that it's built through. Um, and uh, so this is a kind of runtime where you can install applications. And you can, you can choose, uh, there is an underlying uh, application, which is also built on Holochain, which is the dev hub. Uh, and that actually is where you can publish your applications too. So when you want to install an application, you can you can uh, you can publish it into the Dev Hub, and you can choose an application and install it. And currently, uh, you have to choose uh, the version uh, that you are aiming for. And I should say, next week is a, a beta release for for the uh, Holochain framework. Uh, so things are stabilizing, and before. It has been pretty rough for some developers because you had to. There were version changes quite often. Uh, I'll just show you one thing. Maybe I'll show you that later. Actually, okay. So then y we can install an application, and once you've installed it, so basically it, it gets it gets the application from the Dev Hub and installs it locally on your compute on your computer. Uh, and this one is just basically for uh, a little talking stickies application, which is basically for meetings. Um, so in order to handle, so it's like sticky notes for for like, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I was I was playing with one just before, which is like, should we have lunch meetings? Where should we have them? The, to be able to facilitate uh, these things and carry them from meeting to meeting and that kind of that kind of thing. Uh, and it's it's a very basic kind of proof of concept uh, application, uh, and uh, you can so you can you can install. Or you can actually do if you if if you don't want to install from the dev hub and that kind of file system, you can just also uh, download an uh, a application and install it directly from file. So basically, one of the projects I'm working on, we are doing an event app, and this is actually very very bare bone. This is two days of work, uh, but uh, but I'll just show it how you install it, uh, and you can install your where did that one go? Downloads, maybe. Uh, here, so basically install an application. I'll do that because I already have it installed. And here you can you can uh, you can also choose. One of the fun things is you can choose a network seed, and that gives you a whole new network. So basically, if I call this Foo Cafe, anybody who installs this application with that seed will be able to just see this space that I've just created and get into this space. Uh, and what we are building here is just basically an event management uh, module 
where you'll be able to um, to create um, events and hold on and um, attend them and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I can show you actually the one that we have running because there's some events in there. Um, so just basic basic event management stuff of how because this is something we feel is missing now that people have left Facebook a lot. Uh, and there isn't a coherent space where we can actually do this. Um, but what's more fun than having these uh, individual applications is this thing that I'm super excited about. Uh, and this application is called We. And We is basically a, a membrane management tool. So basically, you're managing your groups. Uh, and what you can do here is you can you can you can start a group, say Foo Cafe. And you put in a little thing. There we go. Uh, you have your how you want to appear in the group. Where did I put here? There we go. And within this, you can also just uh, install applications. So this basically installs applications for your for your um, for your group. And anybody who who uh, wants to join this group is able to uh, send you their public key, which you could see here. When you install We, you get this window where your public key is sorted. And this should be a prettier interface fairly soon. Public keys are not so easy to handle. It would be better to just be able to invite people. Uh, but for now, you can send your public key to somebody, and they can invite you into a group. Uh, so basically, the one I just created. Um, and then you can choose to uh, be part of whatever applications you want to be part of within that group. You, can, you don't have to use all of the things that are available, but you can. Uh, so if you, and here you can just use, this is basically just a calendar application for the group. Um, and I'll put in, now I'm speaking here. Uh, top. I don't know what happened there. There we go. So that's just so that's just a joint calendar for the group. But one of the fun things with with building the applications and this 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 framework this way is that you can also choose to navigate as you would in say like a Google Cal or something like that where you want to be able to see all of the groups that you're in and to have your view. So this is the agent agent uh, centricity that, that Julia was mentioning of creating the applications where you can, you can step into the group view of this is what's happening within our group and what we're doing. Or you can see this is my view of all of the groups that I'm in and all of the things that are happening uh, and tie that together into, into coherent um, interfaces. Um, all right. I don't know. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to go into when I was just freewheeling um, is the uh, is the whys of Holochain. But maybe that's not. I mean, basically for me, uh, this can deliver on the promises uh, of that blockchain that's been talking about a lot. A lot of the like secure peer-to-peer uh, -peer software that doesn't necessarily have anyone in the middle. You don't need any, like as you see, you don't need any companies in the middle. You can just create the software and run it locally and have it work uh, with peers. And you, um, you, you have the freedom to change that software and do that in a way that fits you. Uh, and then uh, it's it's extremely modular in the way it's built. Uh, every backend, every application, uh, you can call in from a UI. You can call into any of the applications. So you can basically start tailoring your own UIs that just call into any any of the applications because they're all calling in as you uh, on your local host. So 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 stitching them together is quite a powerful thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's the, there's the thing of, uh, there's a big part of this project that is about something uh, that's being spoken about as an unenclosable carrier, which basically means that nobody else can come in the middle of me and the other person that I'm trying to send a message to. And this, I think, is a really, really powerful thing that Holochain enables. 
so that's something we could go into if we want to. Um, yeah, and it's really it's really quick. I mean, it, there's time to learn to build things, but it's quite quick to deploy and experiment and test things with your group. So that's one of the big I mean, drivers for, for me to start experimenting with this, because I have a lot of groups that I'm in and I want to play with. Uh, so this is interesting. Question. This, uh, <coughs> this public key you have here, so I, I assume there is some sort of PKI structure in this, uh, and there is a private key as well held by each user. Is that something you get when you onboard into this, and then you use that private key for any of your interactions? So currently, the private I, there's a private key for, for, for this public key, which was created when I installed Wii uh, as an application. So basically, uh, in this framework, you can install Wii. And when you do, you get a private key and a public key. For and Wii. For Wii. Okay. But that is something that is also, I think, I'm not sure exactly when the timeline is on this. But there is a big application, a very, very central application in the Holochain ecosystem called the Deep Key, which is a distributed uh, public key infrastructure, uh, and that is to enable key management uh, between devices uh, for your identity uh, and also between applications to be able to generate keys and, and if you lose a device you want to be able to uh, revoke access for those keys and that kind of stuff. And that's, uh, that's not currently uh, built, but that is something that is being, or it's being built, but it's not finished. Uh, and that is a very critical thing for me. I think, I mean, f in my experience of working and 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 interaction with with uh, with the whole space of crypto uh, applications, uh, it is pretty sketchy to have that kind of. You know, you have your one phrase, and then if something happens to that, all everything is is up for grabs. And uh, so I think that that will be a, a major major thing to to have in order for. Uh, us to really start trusting distributed systems because that is basically what we're what we're uh, gaining uh, or like what we what we're pushing away with distributed system is these other gatekeeping but also trust creating entities like where our bank IDs are people trust the bank ID quite heavily uh, and f I mean it is really uh, has a lot of institution behind it so it's clear uh, yeah but 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 it would require some secure element type of technology to store those private key. Otherwise, uh, you are very vulnerable in the whole whole chain usage for yourself, unless you can store that private key uh, securely. Yeah. I mean, it and, and how would you store that? Uh, because uh, you, you're talking about unsafe environments like a PC or, or a, a mobile, which are a completely unsafe sort of environment uh, to uh, hold those keys. Mm -hmm. So are, are there ideas of how you actually maintain those uh, private keys? Uh, yes, I'll defer the question, because it's not my area's expertise, but I, I, I am sure that things like having a USB key that is that is not, uh, that, that is just meant to be a storage, like a lot of the uh, hard, or what are they called, cold wallet kind of thing, hard, hard, hard yeah. What was it called? Hard, hard wallet. hardware wallets, hard wallets. Yeah, like that. That that situation, uh, and uh, multiple. I mean, social coordination of keys is also really interesting. Where you can re revoke your keys uh, through uh, a number of other people doing that, allow or allowing that action to take place. So if I've lost my keys, uh, I have trusted parties that would be able to. Uh, initiate a rev revocation of keys on my behalf and things like that. Okay. Um, but yes, that's. I mean, there is. I. I would. Uh, I'm, I. I. I can. If you have uh, more in-depth things, I can. I, can, I know yeah. who to send them to. No, and I, that, I, I there will be more on I that. I can just see that this whole architecture, because if you have a, if you have sort of a client-server type of architecture, a lot of security is in the server. The clients are unsafe, but security is there because mm -hmm. of the server. Here you are talking about more of a mesh structure, and and you need to solve that in a in an adequate way. Uh, yeah. And then it's interesting just to understand how how it's done because it, without that you are very vulnerable for uh, these applications and what the, what are supposed to do really in terms of uh, attacks. Yeah, but there is also I mean one of the one of the interesting parts for this is there is not r like as as much as 
there could be attacks, it's not as interesting to attack a network. Or like, there's a lot of applications where the security threshold isn't as important because it's not about, for instance, sure. money yeah. uh, or, or that kind of uh, very delicate thing. Uh, a lot of it is if you if you it's a calendar application or it's a chat application or it's it could be reasonably uh, done even though that full sure. management suite isn't there. Um, but yeah, it's definitely and and I mean it, people have to know. Well, if they take control of your device, of course they, that's a, always a problem when somebody gets into your computer. But but in general, it's not very easy to to know about other people uh, and what networks they're running sure. like there's no no real way no i can see you relying uh, that the whole chain is relying on that distribution of groups and uh, and no central node and all that yeah I, I can see the benefits of that for sure yeah cool so more questions jacob uh so what i've understood uh every app has its own dht correct uh does that how well does that work like with efficiency and stuff for like very small apps, like when you're like two people, does that like hold up? Do you actually find each other on how much reliance does that, does that put on the bootstrap node? Like does the bootstrap node have maybe too much power or are you mitigating that and so on? Um, well, I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, battle testing to be done actually uh, around this and seeing seeing what works and what needs support. Uh, I think that there is um, uh, there are applications that will need um, where there are very few uh, users that might need a, a sort of supporting uh, a node, uh, and there is a there is a whole uh, basically I can say that there is a whole hosting uh, service built on top of this framework by a company that's owned by, owned by the foundation called Holo. And that service is also something that you can use if you want to maintain uptime or something. You can use that to create a sort of headless, like a, a userless uh, peer that can maintain different DHTs if needed. Um, but there is also, I, I mean, it, I, th I think it'll be um, Something that I don't think you can set right now, but that will be said, is how much redundancy does this application need? And if it's, if it's enough, uh, and if it's a very small application, maybe you try to make it full redundancy. And, and if it's, that means everybody has, basically becomes more of like a blockchain thing where it's like, yeah, all of the things that you create actually get sent to all of the three people that are there. I mean, if you have an application with just three people, everybody probably will get everything because that's, if the minimal level of redundancy is that like five people have have the information, then you're never going to get above that. So everything will be shared all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's more. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, also, yeah, um, how uh, like this uh, privacy aspects of the HTs, like people generally know exactly who is connected to it and what they want, sort of like what they're requesting and so on. Do you have like, are there like, uh, um, yeah, have you mitigated the privacy problems of DHCs in some way? Or are there plans? I don't know, really. Um, I'm, not, I'm not completely sure I understand the question either. I mean, it's... it's um or like, uh, at least in like BitTorrent, mm -hmm. uh, when you uh, start downloading a file, you announce to the whole DHT, I want this file, and mm -hmm. then everyone in the world, even the people you don't want, uh, they know what files you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, y you wouldn't I'm not sure how much you'd announce because basically what you what how an application would work is you would um, and I'm so for the calendar application for instance as when I create an entry a calendar entry some an event that's happening uh, I would automatically uh, distribute that to a number of peers uh, and which peers is is dependent on uh, the the relative uh, similarity between the hash of the entry and the hash of the public key of the of the peer so that's ho how you create the kind of who gets what information uh, and then 
so basically you would send that out and then you would the other party would be to query uh, to get the to find what information I'm looking for um, and you wouldn't necessarily um, store the queries for later like I'm, I'm not sure that there is like you would send out the information of who what am I looking for or you you would ask you would ask for a piece of information and you're you would uh, see if that is available. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I can't quite see the see the uh, the because basically you're 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 you're. It's very open within the within the membrane you're in within the DHT, but the DHT is close to the outside. So so maybe it's in that way it's less uh, of an issue. Maybe um, yeah. Maybe maybe I'm not answering it still. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's complicated. Uh, also, yeah, like how, like when uh, when an app or a DHT gets like uh, very big, I don't know how many users you imagine an app will have. Uh, but yeah, how did you like how does the what do you call it the redundancy work then? Like, uh, like I, I only want to replicate the tiny bit of stuff. How do I decide what to replicate then? How does that work? <coughs> I mean, in general, there is a there is the problem of things just growing and growing um, because of how when I share something, it it's it, I can't take it back. Kind of, it's not stored just on my device. So if I take if I would delete it from my uh, personal chain uh, and and try to take it away from the DHT, somebody else might see, oh, this piece of information has disappeared. So I should gossip that out to to the other peers again. Uh, but there are uh, there is a function called purge, which is meant to send this uh, say to other nodes that this is a piece of information that we want to remove from the DHT, and everybody should do that. Um, and in general, you, what you can easily do is to mark an entry as deleted. So some some piece of information should be deleted, and whenever you do some sort of upgrade of that system. That's a point when you can actually, because that's a point when you need to migrate between two DHTs. So that's the point when you would also clean the DHTs, basically. You would, uh, you would leave all of the stuff that's marked deleted, and you would bring along uh, the things that, that aren't uh, marked deleted, or that still seem to be relevant. Um, and this is also something where there is not yet such a clear uh, process for, for updating between versions. Uh, most of the applications like Acorn now is basically giving you the ability to export uh, data and then you would start a new project and you would import data when you're, when you're updating. Um, and that's something that would be uh, useful to do. Uh, uh, I mean, that, and that will be like that kind of uh, version management sh should include uh, like a cleaning of, of the DHT. Um, Further along, but I don't. I'm not sure how much of that is built yet, actually. Question: How, how big of a how how many users in uh, sort of I don't know what you're calling a group uh, are you aware of, and and are there any sort of scalability issues if you were to sort of you know just grow it, uh, double it, uh, sort of with more users? Uh, how big? Uh, what's the biggest one you know of? Uh, the, the, I mean, the biggest, the most finished application is Acorn that's, uh, that I know of. Uh, I mean, there might be others that aren't. Uh, and there are some teams, I mean, the largest teams that I've seen use it is not that large. It's like 20 people. Uh, so, but the, but the main uh, scalability is around, I mean, the, the, it, it, we, will, we will see uh, when, it, when we get bigger. I mean, no, there, that's not true. There's a lot of larger applications that have been tested actually on the Holo side. Uh, basically, they have tested a chat, um, a, a basic chat application, uh, and that's had about 1,000 users. Uh, that was running for a while without having any large latency issues. Uh, I don't know, because that's been taken down and re rebuilt. Uh, a lot of times there is a currently a um, uh, being tested a Twitter clone uh, thing called Clutter, uh, and that I'm not sure how many uh, users are on that yet. But that's so that and the, all of the hosted stuff has the added complexity of basically what you're doing is you're allowing a computer to be a host for somebody else's source chain, so somebody else. 
come through that hosting network gets delegated to a host and that host holds their source chain. So basically this is for all of the people and all of the applications where people aren't going to install their own uh, node but still want to use an application. Say we're, For instance, that's something uh, we can think about with uh, event management, like how would people, if I want to have an event and I want people from the outside to join that event, that might need to be hosted out so that somebody who doesn't install the app can still interact with that application. Um, so, so, th so that's some sort of hybrid between uh, right. the client that's server the and, uh, and the mesh network of, of, of whole chain then. Exactly. So that's basically a bridging function between the internet that we have today, where everything is, you're just used to using a web browser and you go to a website and this is all that I want to know of. Uh, and this where you are fully in control of your keys on your local device and everything. And so the, the middle ground there is something that's in order to get the adoption and to get um, you know the use or the, the possibility for people to to move from uh, being you use the applications just as a regular application but then if you do want the extra integrity and the possibility then you can step into just installing the application and running it that way um, yeah I don't remember what the initial question was but that was no, whatever that was good I, I was just wondering if there were scalability issues uh, how big big of applications that you have and it was interesting that you came into this uh, hybrid system of uh, sort of using client server in a way uh, well, well not in a way but you are doing that but you, then you, you could go completely mesh as sort of a uh, in a way second secondary layer on this as well yeah yeah and uh, and the holo hosting network uh, is basically uh, so, for instance, I have this little holo port, which is basically a small server uh, that I have in my house uh, that is one of the uh, initial hosts of this network. So they're, and they're using the service called Cloudflare to basically reroute uh, DNS or uh, the, the domain name uh, calls, like uh, whatever the .com thing or something. Uh, into the network of distributed hosts. Uh, so they match a host to a, a user um, in that um, bridging uh, function. Um, so, that, so, that, so the whole backbone of the hosting infrastructure is distributed uh, with a bunch of small servers. And the idea is that after this initial uh, phase of, of the holoports uh, are done, you'll release a virtual image. So any old hardware equipment can become a host in the hosting network. Um, yeah, I'm just going to check time. So it's 8.30. or oh, 6.30, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep going until the pizza arrives for people. Uh, <laughs> so questions, if, um, are there any more? Just an observation, but there's, there's a, a company called Redgrid, I think, who have um, who have used um, Holochain to and they're into energy distribution and sharing. Um, I don't know how many users they have, but they feels like they've been going for quite a long time. Um, yeah, so, but it's early early days. Yeah. Early days. I mean, it's early days. For, as I was saying, the whole f the whole framework is uh, is better releasing. Next week, so it's it's like it's been it's been a very I've been involved in for around four four or five years or something, and uh, so it's been a long process of of stabilization, stabilization, development, then stabilization. Uh, but r yeah, Redgrid uh, and the kind of larger entity now that is ION, I think it's called Internet of Ener Energy, is basically trying to create software for microgrids uh, for people to have their house as an agent, as a producer within the local neighborhood, and to be able to sell, to buy and sell energy uh, locally uh, between houses and, and also connect to the kind of IoT thing of like my dishwasher should only be running when there is X amount of excess power and... Uh, um, so all of that kind of stuff is, is what they're working on. And, they, and then using Holochain as the basis for an internal currency uh, uh, of credit, credit around energy, so where you can buy energy credit and then sell uh, energy and that kind of stuff. Uh, and this, is a, uh, it, it's, uh, this whole idea of credit is a really big interest of mine also, which we are super excited to be able to build now. Uh, internal credit systems to whatever group you're in. Uh, it can be like a time bank thing. It's super easy to build. Or you can build 
different credit systems that can be connected together um, as long as so building on the trust that is already existing because one of the main things that we can do is we can like we're doing here uh, we can build we can reflect a social space that we are already in into a digital identity so you already have a whole bunch of tr trust within these groups and you can leverage that trust to build relationships and use things like credit in order to create more flows and uh, so I'm really really interested in those kind of applications of of, of this but this, this is where you need the security uh, if you're going to go into credits and payments and things like that uh, then then the security becomes I, I'm working with digital cash applications where you can sort of transact offline uh, as a layer two solution to online systems, which is sort of a little bit like this because mm -hmm. the online system is the client server and then you take it out in layer two and you do sort of payment in between people in an offline mode. Mm -hmm. So it, it sort of implements a lot of these things, but security becomes key if you're going down to a, uh, say a layer two uh, supporting the underlying payment network with offline payments then or paying in between people as mm. you do in your mesh network here mm. because you don't you basically don't want any breach there you don't want any, any attacks because then you are you're extremely vulnerable for you break down in your uh, credit system mm. yeah great <laughs> other questions Aren't you saying the opposite? Aren't you saying that for you, layer one is the digital cash and layer two is the the real world cash? And here it's the other way around. It's you build your trust on the real world and then you represent it digitally. No? I mean... Uh, typically, the, the underlying payment service uh, is with, with its uh, sort of security protocols. That's the underlying. And then you, you could have... A layer one would be something that is using that security protocol. Layer two would use a proprietary outside security protocol on that. Uh, so I would say the mesh network that Holochain represents would be the layer two, uh, and then uh, a client server type of application that you can work in sort of in, in combination with, as you were discussing before. That would be the underlying or yeah, a payment system as well. But you can take out currency, run it in your Holochain mesh network as well, but that will be seen as a layer two to the underlying payment system. Right. And I think basically the the main kind of for me uh, is that th there's there's no like in the layering that we're used to the this it doesn't really require a central layer like all of these different applications can be mended together uh, without having some sort of central ledger or a central uh, application to, to square things off against. Uh, so, but that's, yeah. And I, and I know that there are a lot of people that are working on bridging, uh, bridging all sorts of existing systems into all the chain, uh, whether that be blockchain systems or server-based systems, or there's a lot of people that are, are using this infrastructure and going, going a layer up and saying, like, how do we, how do we, stitch this together with other things because all of the people that are in this are, are really interested in, in meshing with what's already happening in order to make things happen. Yeah. No, I, I, th I think it was interesting what you mentioned before that you, 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 you can have a, uh, an hybrid where there is client server and then you can sort of, uh, you can have people working in that system but, but then you can also take out things and run it in your, uh, say a framework, a group that becomes a currency in, in a way, uh, your credit system within one group really. Uh, which runs outside of the client service structure. Mm. So I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting technology that you have here. Other people? Any, any thoughts? Any reflections? Doesn't have to be questions. Mm -hmm. Jacob? Could you remind me like how the uh, internal architecture work or like sum it up briefly? Because there's like, there was some Git-like thing, right? And then there's, uh, I mean, you brushed past it a bit at the start, but I sort of, yeah, I don't remember how that part works. So it's, um, like so what's the DNA and so on? Yeah. So, so then there's a lot of the, a lot of the terminology, uh, around this is 
these the people uh, that have been building this uh, are very into living systems uh, and living systems design uh, and how to use living patterns um, for systems design and so a lot of the things like uh, maybe we can show some images of that so every application oh maybe that's taken out of there uh, there is for each application. Basically, you have uh, the the backend code, the holochain code, is is uh, encapsulated in what's called the DNA. Uh, and the reason uh, why it's called the DNA uh, is that whoever runs that exact same code is in the same application. So the so the whole uh, well, actually part part at least the the uh, integrity parts of the application. So the application is now. There's a there's a part of the application which is more about how you present things, and there's a part of the application called integrity zones, uh, and zones are short for chromosome, which is the idea of having many small pieces come into a whole DNA. But so uh, the integrity part, where it, it's like this kind of information should be allowed in and not this, and this kind of information is what we're looking for, all of that gets hashed once an application is completed, and that hash becomes the fingerprint of the application. Uh, so that's the DNA of the application, and then that whatever that um, uh, whoever's running the exact same uh, application, the exact same DNA, is in in the same network. Um, so so th so the terminology there is that the 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 back end is called the DNA. Uh, that's the that's the that's the general code of the application, and another layer is that these. What what uh, Holchain is trying to enable is this idea of a social organism as a group, uh, as a social organism, and the social organism has rules of play. Basically, how are you allowed to play within this uh, group in these applications? And those rules are what get codified and and hashed. Uh, so that's the DNA of the group, basically, and how you can what you can do and what this org social organism can perform. Uh, so that's the idea of the the DNA as a as a terminology. Um yeah, and so in in yeah, I don't know if there is any visuals that might help, but like the how does it work in practice? Is it like a JSON schema validator right. or like something fancier? Uh so there is the the uh, validation well, maybe I should probably no, I'm not going to try looking for code. That's going to take me too long. Um so basically you have the all of the whole chain backend stuff is written in Rust. Uh, for and that was one of the reasons why uh, this project ended taking a lot longer, ended up taking a lot longer to stabilize than uh, it would have. Uh, the switch to to Rust as the as the backend or as the the, the uh, language for for writing whole chain. Uh, the reasons for that was basically because of the much higher uh, level of uh, security and integrity and speed actually uh, by being very 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 uh, narrow in how you get to type things and very strict about the applications and how they are supposed to be running um, so all of that is in rust and you write your validation rules uh, for the data in a um, rust file uh, for each application and so you're basically saying when this uh, when somebody posts, so say you have a Twitter application, for instance, the validation rule would say, uh, you'd write in Rust, and it would say, if post is longer than whatever they are now, 250-something characters, uh, this should not be allowed into the applications. That's that's a breaking of the validation rule. Um, and then you could add whatever validations. Maybe the validation is that you have, that you, have, uh, that you are not in negative credit, then you can't go further into that, or the validation rules can be different things depending on the uh, application. Uh, so that's, but that's all written. So all of, the, all, of that, all of the data storage and integrity stuff is all Rust. All of the user interface, you can use whatever, whatever framework you want, JavaScript. Uh, most people use some sort of like React or Angular Vue or yeah, whatever, whatever people want. Uh, but basically, so Rust is for, for storing things. And there are some others. There's a really, really exciting, I'll just sh throw it up there because I really want to shed some light on it. Uh, this project called HoloREA or HREA uh, is, um, is basically a layer, another a layer on top of Holochain 
uh, which is uh, based on, an, on a language around economic activity. Uh, and if you're, so you can use this application uh, and then just only uh, do the front end things within there are predefined calls. Uh, so you don't have to build the back end of any economic application basically. You just need to learn how to call things. And that is all there. Uh, and that is meant to um, <coughs> create economic networks where different economic actors can collaborate on projects and, and distribute resources and uh, do all these things uh, in a shared language. Basically, it's the uh, upgrade of uh, accounting from double entry accounting into a uh, value, um, open value systems uh, kind of accounting where you can do uh, resource planning from by many actors at the same time, not just within one company, for instance. Uh, so this, I, if you're not, if you don't want to learn Rust, but still want to build really cool Holochain applications, you can use HoloREA uh, and just learn the um, the calls that you use um, by GraphQL to to get there. Pizzas are coming. Okay, anything else? Not right now. Okay, I guess this is. I don't know what the what's the normally this is. Uh, is there a break and there is? Yeah. So for me, if you have your questions, then yeah, I think All right. And there is, was there anything else from online, or that was? Oh, there we go. Okay, um, right. So I'm. Uh, yeah, let's have some pizza and see what's what comes up in conversation. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.